Today, I am here to highlight about the asymmetric synthesis and its applications. It is highly interesting and involves much economy of the world. You know how the drug is very important to the mankind. Most of the research money is spent on the the development of the drugs, the few drug, that means uh, the drug without uh, any side effect, which involves uh, the asymmetric synthesis. See, the chemistry is a wonderful subject. According to the Adam Sandler, chemistry can be a good and bad thing. Chemistry is good when you make love with it. Chemistry is bad when you make crack with it. See, chemistry gives a lot of products. Without chemistry, the world cannot survive. I can say, I can say probably as a chemist. Suppose you take the the drug, the simple word drug. Drug can be used for a therapeutic use. That means as a medicine. And the same drug can be abused. So that is the the fourth phase. Chemistry can be a good and a bad thing. Also, according to the just following, every aspect of the world today, even politics and the international relations, relations is affected by chemistry. Definitely. See now we can just see, imagine the current situation, which is a I have COVID-19. See, if the chemistry works well, and if there is a drug for COVID-19, there won't be any damage or effect on the economic condition or anything in the world. If the economy is economy and the health is affected, there will be a uh, for politics and international relations to be affected. So it is a wonderful subject, chemistry, that modern world totally related. I have designed this webinar lecture such that it will be more useful for the third BAC and the PG students. I will start with some basic concepts like isomerism, optical activity, and then about the asymmetric synthesis and its application in various fields. So whenever uh, I think of asymmetric synthesis or drug or anything. Just it really on the organic chemistry. That means the study of organic compounds. Organic chemistry is nothing but study of organic compounds. So the organic chemistry plays an important part in our daily life because the medicines, food, cloths, paper, ink, rubber. So, perfume, what are the things that we are using in day to day or in the inevitable? Organic compounds are important constituents of many parts. Well, the, what are called organic compounds? The carbon compounds. The carbon, a simple element in the periodic table, it's a fundamental building block of life and chemistry. So you take the biological molecules like amino acids, sugars, protein, nucleic acids, vitamins, terpenes, alpha acids. All are carbon molecules, made up of carbon molecules. And all drugs are carbon molecules. And if you take the polymers, the polymer is a wonderful uh, compound. We are uh, light and uh, hard and tough. It is used in many in fields. For example, if we take the fake, the fake it is used to join two parts of uh, any material, and uh, in the fake it contains only a monomer. On the acrylate, when we apply 
to the surface of uh, any material, it undergoes polymerization in the presence of moisture and uh, it joins into different objects. So, such a wonderful application of polymers and the fossil fuels, fossil fuels uh, has a wonderful applications uh, in all the fields, the petrol, the diesel, the kerosene and the uh, number of uh, the petroleum products are there, the oil, fossil fuels are nothing but uh, the property value. And also the diamond, one of the other topic of uh, carbon, uh, it has an uh, ornamental purpose and uh, optical applications also. The graphite, it is also uh, another group of carbon. So the first use of uh, uh, graphite is a pencil, but nowadays uh, it is used as a uh, semiconductor and has a wide application in the electronic systems. And uh, the latest, uh, the carbon uses the carbon nanoparticles. So it has wonderful application in medicine, the purification technique and as a sensor. So I can probably say, since I am an organic chemist, I can say the carbon is the king of elements. Why the carbon shows has such a wonderful property? Why it is very different from the other elements? Why it produces a, 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 a numerous number of compounds? Let us see what is the uh, the uh, basic nature of the carbon. Uh, carbon, it has a versatile nature. The first one is uh, it has a property of cavitation. So it means a self combination of the same atom like a chain. So if you take uh, any element, it can form uh, a chain with uh, three or six uh, similar atoms. For example, if you take the nitrogen, nitrogen can form a chain up to three. The, like a side, N3. If you take the sulfur, it can form uh, the chain of, of its own atom up to 6. But uh, the carbon, so it can, the N number may be 1 to 16. It is a usual number, but it can, the N can be extended to the numerous number. And because of this, the number of carbon compounds uh, are available. And uh, the other property is it is tetrahedral and uh, that means it is attached to the four atoms and it is not uh, a plane or a plane or one. The geometry, it is a sp3 hybrid and it is a, it has a tetrahedral geometry and uh, definitely the geometry makes the molecule very very important. That means uh, why it is not plane or the two hydrogen atoms and the carbon are in the same plane and the other hydrogens what is uh, above the plane and what is below the plane. So the structure is shown here. Uh, that makes the molecule very important. Let us see what is the property of uh, the carbon, the catenation, the chain forming. It can form in different ways. It can form uh, as a same chain, as a branch chain, same cyclic cause or the closed chain. And in this uh, property is the phenomenon called isomerism. So isomerism is a phenomenon where the non-identical or different molecules that have the same molecular form. Just imagine if you are for the two carbon molecule there is no chance of isomerism. If you go for the more than the two or three car, three carbon atoms, there is a formation of isomerism, uh, and the number increases, the isomers also increases, which leads to the formation of numerous uh, a numerous number of organic molecules. So there are number of isomerism that I don't want to explain it here. We uh, we are going to concentrate only on the optical isomerism. That is the uh, uh, interest, uh, our today's interest uh, for the asymmetric synthesis. The optical isomerism, definitely, the organic molecules, uh, they have the ability to rotate the plane for this time, and uh, those compounds we call uh, optical anti compounds. So it is an experimentally observable property. 
So you take the body tool and uh, put it in the polar emitter and see for the optical rotation. If the rotation is observed, the rotation may be the clockwise rotation, then we call it as a, a plus rotation or the dextral rotation the D1. If the rotation is of an anti-clockwise direction and or minus, we call it as a minus of the lever rotation. So those molecules we call as an optically active molecules. If the molecules are not able to rotate the plane model slide, we call it is optically negative molecules. So, uh, within the optical activity, one has to, one has to recall some important terms in optical isomerism. The enosomers, the dextral isomers, the mesoform, and the tessic mixture. Let us see one by one. The enosomers, the enosomers are non superposable mirror images. And the phenomenon we call it is an enosomer isomerism. The example we can take the well known lactic acid. So here we are having the, the D plus lactic acid and it has the optical rotation of plus 2.2 and it has the acid enosomer. The L lactic acid, it has an optical rotation of minus 2.2 degree. So the both two isomers are mirror images and are non superimposable. If I place uh, the L lactic acid or the D lactic acid, the OS atom will be on the hydrogen atom and the hydrogen atom on the OS atom. That is, we call it a non superimposable. And the uh, isomer isomers. So, Dicero isomers are not mirror images and non superimposable. And the phenomenon is called dicero isomerism. So, example is the dicero isomers of a tartaric acid. These two molecules are not mirror images and non superimposable. So, the difference between the enosomers and the isomers, apart from this, is the enosomers has a Yes, they have the same chemical properties and physical properties, but uh, dicero isomers uh, in the chiral condition, uh, uh, they are having different physical and uh, chemical properties. And the recipe mixture form, it is a mixture containing 50 percentage D form and 50 percentage L form, and uh, because of this, it is uh, optically inactive. Uh, by external composition. So we have the D lactic acid and the L lactic acid. If it is present in a weak weak molecule mixture, it is optically inactive. And we have the piece of form, it is also optically inactive. And uh, we have the molecule like uh, the viso water acid, it has a plane of symmetry. See now just uh, I have to mention about the symmetry. So, for a molecule to be optically active, it must have a chiral center. The chiral center is the one which is uh, the or a or center which is surrounded by four different atoms of groups. The optical activity requires a chiral center. Also, the molecule must, must not possess any symmetry elements. The symmetry elements like the plane of symmetry, the mirror symmetry, the, the plane of symmetry, the axis of symmetry, and the center of symmetry, and the alternate axis of symmetry. So, the two conditions for a molecule to exhibit the optical rotation, only if it has the chiral center, also it must not possess any plane of symmetry. So, we call that those molecules as asymmetric molecules. So, for any chemist, any organic chemist, the dream is to prepare the optically, optically, optically active compound, especially the optically pure compound. So, let us see what is an optically pure compound. It is the dream of every synthetic organic chemist. So, in the lab, we usually work for the synthesis of the pure compound and especially if you are able to prepare a 
Yeah, yeah optically if you are doing beam copper, definitely you are a good chemist. And uh, you, are, uh, you will be appreciated by every businessman or every, uh, every, every industry. Definitely here, a yeah, scientist is there. He, has, he is telling that success we create a drug that is effective, quick acting, and expensive. Why we are calling it is expensive? The asymptotic synthesis is itself expensive. So people are doing this search to prepare optically pure copper in an in inexpensive in method. So research is going on in, in the world way to prepare the optically pure copper in an in, in in inexpensive method. So what is mean optical purity? So we can express optical purity uh, by with respect to the optical rotation or with respect to the electrophoric excess. So optical rotation, the percentage of optical purity, which is given by the ratio of uh, the optical, uh, the specific optical rotation, which is given with the bracket of alpha of sample and the alpha of the pure enunciatory to And the enunciatory excess, always uh, if you look for the look into the paper or any research paper. In the asymmetric synthesis, they will give in the product with some 90% of the excess or 70% of the excess and so on. So, which is given as the difference between the, the concentration of uh, the R i sober and the S i sober divided by the total concentration or the, the amount into 100. So, the optical purity is mainly equal to enosoberic excess, but it is experimentally determined. And also the diastereoisum, diastereoisum excess. So what is the difference between enosoberic and the diastereoisum? I already explained it by using the, by giving the volume. So if the volume contains only one chiral sector, it is, it, it, can, it will be an enosoberic. No diastereoisum is possible. If the bottom has more than one chiral center, apart from the enosoberic, diastereoisoberic is possible. So that is the problem. So diastereoisoberic excess, that also expresses the optical purity. So more the enosoberic excess, more the diastereoisoberic excess percentage, and then more will be the optical purity. So the optical purity, it is nothing but enosoberic. How do you obtain an SUMQ compounds? There are many methods. So, the first one is the, our own natural methods. So, nature is a wonderful model. It always pure. We are the only persons or only human, uh, human beings. We are promoting the nature. Nature is a good chemist. He referred himself the optically pure compounds with 100% enosoberic excess. The amino acids, so called amino acids, sucrose, proteins, the nucleic acids, vitamins, terpenes, alkaloids, steroids. So these are all that exist in nature as a, a pure form that is a enosoberic pure form with 100% enosoberic excess. Other methods are available. By isolation of precipitation, the mechanical separation and the acid base reaction, the exhibiting methods, more and more. Many methods are available for the isolation of precipitation. And we can also uh, prepare optically pure compound by laboratory controlled exhibiting reactions. Many reactions are the enzymes are the enzymes are always still used basically. And but the most efficient method of synthesis of enosoberic compound is the asymptotic synthesis. Let us say, what do you mean by like asymptotic synthesis? Asymptotic synthesis is a chemical reaction in which one or more new elements of chirality are formed in a substrate molecule and which produces the serioisoberic products in unequal amounts. See, we have the, the astrophenone, 
calcium work that is available in the nature and prepare the target molecule or which, which end up with the under percentage ensemble excess. The final oxalate method, it is a, uh, we call it the diastereoselective dia reaction. So we have an ensemble pure compound called a chiralaxalate is attached to the sorting material. The sorting material, the substrate is not optically active, but we are going to attach a chiral uh, compound to the substrate so that uh, the incoming reagent attached to the, the chiral bone center selectively forming the di diastereoselective compound. The diastereoselective reaction is carried out which be because of the enosomatic purity of the chiral oxygen gives only one enosomer of the product. So after the reaction is uh, carried out, the chiral oxygen is removed, for example, by using hydrolysis, which leaves the product uh, and uh, giving the single potential. So the role of chiral oxygen is to direct the incoming reagent to attack from one side rather than the other side and uh, giving a erosive selective and a diastereoselective selective product. The best chiral oxygen can be recycled, so although stereoisomeric quantities are needed, there is no waste. A simple scheme of uh, uh, chiral oxygen method, uh, the chiral oxygen attached to the substrate and uh, now the diastereoselective uh, selective reaction is carried out and uh, finally the chiral oxygen leaves the product, giving a erosomeric pure product. The example here is that the alkylation reaction with the valine derived chiral acid. So here we are having the chiral acidity. Here this is the chiral acidity and it is attached to the substrate and here is the complex and the which directs the incoming reagent to attach preferentially to this side forming 94 percentage this size of that and finally this chiral acceleration is removed giving a offer gives a few or highly energy selective and diastereo selective product and the chiral reagent method it's a reagent control method the formation of the chiral center is induced by a chiral reagent intermolecule so we have the prokaryotes under the same astrophenone we have the the, the boron compound that is a chiral, chiral boron, boron hydrate and it undergoes reaction preferentially forming 97 percentage forming alcohol with 97 percentage in some many excess and the chiral catalyst method the formation of the chiral center is induced by a chiral catalyst So there are many erosomatic catalysts are available nowadays. So those erosomatic catalysts are chiral coordination compounds, and those becomes so chiral. Example is vinap and the vinyl. So these compounds uh, uh, shows a chirality because of atropisomerism. One might know that uh, what do you mean by atropisomerism? We have the these two, the alkali system, and we have the single bond here, and because of the bulkier groups here in the ortho position, there is a uh, there is a the one alkali groups go out of the plane compared to the other alkali. We call it is a ortho position, and these can act as a chiral catalyst. So let us see. What are these? Uh, what are the application of this uh, asymmetric synthesis? Currently, most of the more, more than a half of the drugs, that is, uh, 50 percentage in use are chiral compounds, and 80 percentage of the last ones are marketed as acetates, consists of an equimolecular mixture of two enantiomers. 
Although they have the same beautiful structures, most enzymes of receiving tracts exhibit more difference in biological activities such as pharmacology. The pharmacology is nothing but is concerned with the users, effects, and the modes of action of drugs. And toxicology concerned with the nature, effect, detection of a toxic or poison effects. Pharmacokinetics is concerned with the movement of drugs within the body and metabolism, which is concerned with the, how the drugs are absorbed and the action and the excretion. So, in a contrast, contrast to chiral artificial products, all natural products are under single isomer form. As already I have told, all natural amino acids are either isomer, all natural sugars are P isomers. And uh, the asymmetric synthesis, uh, it has a very good application in various fields, the pharmaceuticals, the drug safety, the flavors, and the agrochemicals. See, the mechanism of chiral drugs uh, with the biological environments are now experienced. And now the, the technologies are uh, very much improved and uh, the mechanism. That means uh, how the drug is absorbed uh, within the uh, living organism, how it uh, uh, act how you uh, how act how it is acted and how it is excited that uh, that is a mechanism it is now explained therefore it is important to promote the chiral separation and the analysis of specific drugs in pharmaceutical interfaces as well as in clinic in order to eliminate the unwanted isomer and the bridge see not uh, the pharmaceuticals they Involve, involves in uh, the preparation of drugs, but uh, the drug always has a side effect. So, we must think of the drug safety. For that only, we must go for the, the asymmetric stresses. If the one isomer has a good effect, the other isomer may have a bad effect. So, that is also very important application of the asymmetric stresses. And uh, we have to find out the optimal treatment and the right therapeutic control of the patient. That means uh, how the disease is controlled by the drug. Chirality is now a top class subject for academic research as well as for pharmaceutical development. According for the important role of uh, chiral separation, uh, in 2001, Nobel Prize in chemistry has been awarded to three scientists, uh, Dr. Williams and uh, Shortless. You might know the name Sorpress. He is a man of uh, Sorpress, a uh, uh, asymmetric epoch station. They are from the uh, ESA and uh, Nayori in Japan for the development of uh, asymmetric synthesis using chiral catalysts in the production of single enantiomeric drugs or the chemicals. They use the lithium and the rhodium as the catalyst. In fact, the uh, US uh, Food and uh, Drug Administration called FDA recommends the assessment of each enantiomer activity for acidic tracks in body and promotes the development of new chiral tracks as sequelates or enantiomers. So the aim is to reduce the, the side effect that can be achieved only by the asymmetric synthesis. So many tracks used in clinical practice contain only in one or more chiral centers. These chiral centers are often used therapeutically either as pure situations one can use a recipe mixer if the both isomer has the same effect, otherwise one isomer has the therapeutic effect and the other isomer has no effect. If it is so, we can use the recipe mixer. Always in the preparation of recipe mixer is an inexpensive one. If the one of the isomer is a toxic, then we must go for the purification of the studio isomer. That means that means the asymmetric synthesis which is which is expensive. So, the beneficial effect of the drug can reside in one enzyme, in enzyme with its bad enzyme having. That means that there are a number of factors. If the one enzyme have one property, the other enzyme have no activity. That is the biological activity. So, if we take the R plus dichloropro, it is active enzyme in clean weeds as a herbicide but the SR isomer is inactive. So in this case, uh, we can use this uh, drug uh, 
as a recipe mixer because we can send this uh, drug uh, with, uh, with the low cost. In some cases, the old isomer has a, a high activity, very high activity and uh, the other isomer has a some activity. For example, if, if we take the case for time, which is used to uh, used to for the <coughs> to treat the stroke patient to remove the clot, it is uh, more potent as an anticoagulant than its or isomer. So in this case also one can use the as a recipe mentioned. But in some case, some case one isomer is a biologically active, it, uh, it shows some uh, uh, useful activity, but uh, other isomer it has an antagonist activity against the active isomer. For example, if you take the uh, yes, thalidomide, it is effective sedative used to treat the morning sickness, that is the vomiting sickness. It, 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 can, it can be given for uh, the treatment of uh, to decrease uh, the vomit, vomit sensation. But uh, the or thalidomide is a teratogenic. The teratogenic uh, that uh, creates a uh, Uh, that creates a, uh, a child illness in the child. So, the other case is of, the next case is a, a complete separate beneficial of adverse activity from the active cancer. For example, conine is a ill isomer, act as an anti malarial drug, whereas conidine is a D isomer, act as an anti arrhythmic drug. That is, it is used for the treat the hot patient. See how this enantiomer act differently. So the we have the receptor side in the a biological molecule. For example, we can take the enzyme. So enzyme can attach specifically one enantiomer than the other enantiomer. So the three dimensional interaction of two dimensional with a macro molecule such as enzyme or the receptor to form diastereomeric complexes may result in chiral recognition and a single difference in pharmacokinetic process as well as pharmacodynamics. So here is an example. We have the or various epinephrine. It's a natural epinephrine. It is used for the Treat the it is act as a neurotransmitter and here we have the enzyme in the living organism. It is an enzyme active site and the aura in server only can fit into and form the enzyme subset complex. Suppose uh, if it is a SI server, geometrically it cannot be fit into the the enzyme and uh, because of that it cannot be an uh, active biologically active. So that is the thing that is a mechanism which makes the enzyme one enzyme more active or so, exhibits some property compared to the other enzyme. So let us paint some uh, some example to explain this this one. The DOPA or dihydroxy 3 4 phenylalanine is a precursor of a dopamine that is effective in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Dopa was used at a recipic form. Those days, the dopa was used as a recipic form. Both D dopa and L dopa present in eco molecule But it was found, it was found now that only L-dopa is used for therapeutic for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. It is a deadly disease, it is exhibited a nervous disorder that affects the movement of a, a particular person. But uh, the D-dopa which is toxic and uh, it uh, ends up with a disease called A. granulocytosis. Which is nothing but which decreases the the uh, white blood cells in the body.
which is a treatment with a nitromethane in the presence of a chiral catalyst and anthenum or vinyl, complex to afford the chiral alcohol 2, the nitro alcohol 2 on surface phase of platinum oxide catalyst hydrogenation in the presence of acetone afford an S propanol 3. It is a very good method for the preparation of the chemistry uh, 2 complex. The uh, other example is the uh, limonene. Limone. The enantiomers mass of limonene is spelled differently. So, one of the enantiomers, yes, limonene spells lemon. Its mirror image compound or limonene smells orange. We distinguish between these two interactions because of the nasal receptors, which are also made up of chiral molecules that recognize that difference. See, it has very good applications. So, preparation of pure yes limonene or the preparation of or pure or limonene, which has a very good application in the food and flavor industry. Let's see the synthesis. A six numbered monocyclic terpene or limonene have been synthesis respectively by new enamsocyclic intramolecular cyclic reaction of mirrored ether, the other mirrored ether, using an R or one, one dash binaptyl to benzoxy to oxy auxiliary as a chiral leaving group in the presence of tin or chromate. It is an example of a Asymmetric synthesis using chiral auxiliary method. It is a the Lewis as acid resistant chiral electroplated the auxiliary. And the other compound is the, the carbon, which has the different uh, carrying model as compared to the or carbon, it has a characteristic sweet, smear with water. So, the carabin is, is nothing but the zira, and the S carbon has the, that odor, and the R, R carbon has the spare one leaves odor. So, both carbons are used in the food and the flavor industry. So this can be prepared by substrate control asymmetric synthesis. Chiral methadone is treated with nitrosyl chloride to form. So this this compound is chiral. This compound is chiral. So we call this a, the chiral food synthesis. So the R methadone is treated with nitrosyl chloride, and we have to form the. Uh, the Chiral compound is formed and a limonone nitrosyl chloride is formed and finally it forms a hot carbon. See, normally insects use the chiral messages called chiral hormones as sex attractants. The similar to odorants in human beings, in the case of insects, hormones chirality can influence the degree of attractiveness of the insect. For example, Esolian is a female attractive sex hormone of holy fruit fly. On the other hand, the R Olean attracts male of the species. So, it is also in the preparation of an asymmetry pure R Olean or the Esolian, it has an application of a, uh, killing this, uh, the fruit flies. Olean is a nature product isolated as a resume from natural resources. Erosomeric pure or olean and esolene are synthesized by benzene and all using chiral monster acid catalyst by spiroacetylation of readily available hydroxy enol ethers. If we have the hydroxy enol ether and we have the chiral monster acid, this is a one. The geometry is like that. 
we here we have the both the s form and the r form for this catalyst and here is the r form if we take the r form we end up with the r o here and if we have the s form of the catalyst we end up with the s o here so it's a chiral crossed acid catalyst and it is published in the nature by 2012 We have any clarification? You can ask me now. Sir, we have any question? You can ask me, the audience, the participants.